The Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 3, Thoughts. This episode is called The Convert. So, the episode opens with... I really, really like Bo-Katan. I witnessed it. Can we go now? Can we just... Can we have, like, exasperated Bo-Katan? Can we just put her in everything now? Just, like, every single time someone accomplishes something that's super meaningful to them, just have her there going, Okay, you did it! So... The way home is looking great right now. If we if we go immediately, I think we might make it in time for just, you know, just, yeah, absolutely love to see it. Her and Jessica Jones, they can, they can, like, riff off each other about how annoying it is to have to deal with these frickin' people and their, their problems that, that just, yeah, absolutely love to see it. And, yeah, uh, Din gets a sample of the water, and that's his proof. You know, last, uh, in my video for the for episode 2, I was wondering, like, how is he going to prove? They they did have an answer. And and it does make sense, you know, at, near the end of the episode, the uh, the armorer pours the water into the, the thing, and, yeah, you know, she every so often we see her pour something into that thing. Clearly, it has some... You know, there's something there, I don't know if it's, like, supernatural or technological, but that thing can actually... So, so yeah, that was... I, I approve. And, yeah, the, the you know, as they, as they leave, they, they are intercepted, if you will, by some soup and tie interceptors. The, absolutely love the scene of the, the, you know, flying away the, um... Ah, what's it called? You know, Bo-Katan in the... You know, she she manages to, to get through. Also, it was pretty funny with the, you know... Don't worry. I grew up flying these cliffs. But that was a, a long time ago, you know, just... And, and yeah, you know, Din gets into the, the uh, fan service mobile and shoots some of them. And then, you know, some of them bomb the, I guess, temple, you know, the, yeah, that was, so, so, yeah, you know, there, by the end of this episode, it is like, wait, it's, I mean, there's nothing for her to go back to, there's no one and nothing for her to go back to, so, is she going to, you know, just be a member of the watch, I guess they're called, and, ah, there's too many of them, Sid. And, you know, the uh, uh, Pershing, Dr. Pershing, has a TED Talk, although this is the Star Wars equivalent, so it's the TED Talk. And, you know, he points out that, you know, cloning, you know, he built off the, the Kaminoans. Do you hear that? Rise of Skywalker? It's not just, it's not a secret known only to the Sith. And I really appreciate this thing of like you know you have the the this rich guy who ends up admitting oh I should not talk in public because this is not going well for me, you know he points out you know okay so he was about to be drafted we're not told exactly why he wasn't, but if he was powerful back then he probably pulled some strings or someone pulled strings for him you know and yeah he points out to him it doesn't make that much difference who's in charge, if it's fascists or this, you know, democratic, it, it doesn't make a big difference for him. He's had a cushy life through all of these different, you know, and I appreciate, you know, they made sure to cast, like, if I had to guess, maybe a middle-aged actor or so. So, yeah, you know, he may have, it's credible that he's lived through all of these different rulers and... Yeah, like, I don't know, I guess it affects a lot of people, but it's not really affecting him, so he doesn't really, like, who, wait, who's in, who's in charge? Is this still the fascists who go door to door, killing people? No, wait, no, it's the, it's that democratic, right, slipped his mind, you know, absolutely great point. And I like the detail that, 
you know, the, the amnesty program does appear to have some really great, you know, it, it does good things for the, the, you know, these reformed, uh, empire, imper imperial workers, you know, but they, you know, they, are, they have numbers instead of names. And, you know, by the end, like, it seems like, you know, maybe they're not quite as, like, forgiving as they at first appeared to be. You know, they don't take Dr. Pershing's account at all. You know, he's he, he doesn't even get to hear, you know, what... I'm afraid I don't remember her name. I, I think it was played by Katie O'Brien. I gotta see her in more stuff. She was excellent here. She was excellent. It, yeah, Katie M. O'Brien. She was excellent here. She was excellent in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Okay, so she used to be called Comms Officer. Oh, she is still called Comms Officer. But yeah, that is her. The, um, yeah. Although it doesn't, no, yeah, that's definitely her. Um, yeah, I gotta see her in more stuff. She really, I, I really, the, the, oh, right, before I go off on talking about her performance, he doesn't get to know what she said about him, and he doesn't get to counter it. And, yeah, uh, you know, the word Kafkaesque is overused, I grant, but that is Kafkaesque. You know, he does not legitimately he know what he's being charged with. You know, it, it, okay, so, you know, they caught him with these, these, you know, like, you know, it, it, what, is he being charged with thievery? Is it conspiracy to undermine the Republic? These are, these are not the same, you know, is it, like, I'm pretty sure she didn't just, she didn't tell them, oh, you know, he was just, he was going to steal this stuff. He was going to sell it on the black market because he wants a little more spending money. No, no, no. She probably told them he was going to, like, he was trying to undermine the, the government. You know, he, he was going to, to to practice science that we've outlawed, you know. But yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't even get to hear it, and he certainly doesn't get to, to argue against it. And it's not as though he's silent on the matter. He tries to, you know... What did she say to you? I didn't do, you know, she she tricked me, she trapped me. And they're just like, no, 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 look, we have this under control. You don't need to worry about it, you know, and that's, that's not a very democratic thing. To That is, that is a dictatorship, you know, so I really appreciate this, because, because that is the thing. You know, we like to think of, like, revolutions, and it, it basically was, you know, the, the, the um the events of the original trilogy a civil war or revolution so something along those lines we like to think of those as these neat like okay you know when the revolution is over we get a functioning democracy but you know if you look at for example like the french revolution a lot of the people who you know who was who was executing the the um, the royal family, yeah, the royals and, and such, nobility, I guess, also, but, but yeah, you know, the, the people who were executing, a lot of them ended up dead themselves, you know, and it's not, it's not a neat and clear thing, so yeah, the idea that the New Republic has some elements of this, because, you know, from, from their point of view, from a certain point of view, it's like, the Empire was responsible for many deaths and a lot of misery. You know, they blew up the entire planet of Alderaan, you know, to prove that they were serious. You know, to, to they, they even, like, you know, they even, yeah, um, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name, but the, the, um, Tarkin. Tarkin specifically said, so, you know, um, Leia says, no, it's, it's innocents, it's civilians, and he says, would you prefer a military target, you know, and then has it destroyed, so, yeah, they're, they're terrified that the Empire might come back, you know, and 
take take back over and destroy a lot, you know. I can't help but wonder, is this like early like first order maybe? Because this I would really admire if this does become because that is the thing like where did the first order come from how did the first order rise despite there being you know the new republic was a, like how did they amass so much power maybe this is the the um, yeah I, I it's possible that there is I, I know there is a um, animated show that is about the the I think is the one called Resistance. Um, yeah, yeah, Resistance. I haven't gotten to watching that yet. I'm I'm working my way through the Clone Wars right now. I'm almost through season four by now. So you know I will make it to to Rebels eventually, Resistance eventually. But um. In, yeah, in live action, there really has not been a lot of clear detail on how they were able to rise, you know. So, yeah, I could I could see how it could be, you know, there, there is historical present, yeah, real life present for that kind of thing. You know, sometimes a, you know, a movement like that grows under a, a dem democracy, you know, technically, like, Hitler, you know, as he came to power... There was sort of a democracy, you know. Was they were they were very split, and he took advantage of that. You know, it. He didn't win the the like overwhelming. That's a, you know, that's that's misinformation. But he did. He he got enough votes that they were like, let's give him a you know. If we if we let him have some power, he's going to prove in no time that he is useless because we can tell that he's useless. And they gave him some power, and he got rid of democracy. So, yeah, this might be that. This you know the first order rising in a, in a you know some something of a democracy makes a lot of sense. So I I really appreciate that you know getting some some. Um, some some world building, not you know. There's been a lot of fan service on the show, and in general, Star Wars recently, Disney, Disney Star Wars in general, a lot of fan service. I really appreciate this bit of world building. Now, let's see. Then we have the. Yeah, I really appreciate. Yeah, Katie M. O'Brien incredibly talented like throughout the episode i legitimately was not sure can she be trusted like my mind was going a mile a minute like is she is she still empire and like you know in in um what's it called in jedi knight 2 jedi outcast outcast there's imperial remnants you know, so, like, is that what we're dealing with, or is it, you know, yeah, honestly, I could see how this might be, like, Rise of the First Order kind of thing, similar to how, um, Kane appears in Red Alert 1, which is set before Command and Conquer, I want to say it's called Tiberian Dawn, now let's see but but yeah you know or is it just like does she legitimately believe that he could do good with with the cloning you know because we know that Gideon wanted the cloning not to do good but for selfish purposes so yeah yeah really love seeing a little bit of the new republic and live action uh, the, the government you know we we haven't really seen anything else uh, you know of of the new republic other than the places that that Din Djarin goes, which tend to not be, like, have a, a ton of government, you know, because that's not really the kind of places that he, you know, as a bounty hunter, that's, yeah, that's not really his jam. And, yeah, like, we, we see them walking down 
I guess it's like a Main Street kind of thing, you know, you've got close-up magic, you've got juggling, which I, I really appreciate. The, the, I, I like the idea that even in the world, in a, in a world of, like, Jedi stuff, like, you know, so, like, this is, this is taking place not very long after the, the, uh, Return of the Jedi, so, like, People must know what, like, Luke Skywalker did. You know, he was instrumental in stopping the Empire. But yeah, let's, you know, we can still, like, pull a cloth away and, ah, oh, there's a bird there. You know, that still, that still draws people in. I, I like that. And they're carrying these little, like, popsicle... I, oh, I, I didn't write it down, but I loved the... What was it? Fo photon fizzle or something like that? That's That's great. And they... You know, thankfully the actors didn't have to interact too much with it because it's probably... They might have had something on set that was, like, glowing, but it probably didn't taste wonderful. But yeah, like, you know, some kind of... Honestly, I can't, I'm not 100% certain if it's, like, a popsicle or a, a sort of, like, cotton candy. It looks a little bit like there's some elements of both, but just, yeah, I... I I like when we see little Star Wars equivalents of stuff that exists in, in real life and such. Because, honestly, why wouldn't they? You know, popsicles and cotton candy is great, you know. So, yeah. And they point out, you know, the ethics of cloning are complicated. And I, I really appreciate that is something I've wanted a live-action Star Wars thing to say for quite some years now because they did really not account they they really did not address that in the in the prequels it's just like oh there's an army and it's like oh we know the army is gonna turn evil eventually and it's just yeah and and that that was also you know in the t talk earlier in the episode he mentioned he wanted to clone an or, or yeah he wished that. And or that that I I think it was his mother's heart was failing, and if they had organ cloning, they could have saved her life. And that is you know that is an actual thing. So yeah, I forget. I think ah uh, crap. I I haven't. It's it's been a while since I read up on on where we are in the real world with cloning. But certainly in theory, you could clone an organ, and uh, yeah. And, yeah, they have to leave the perimeter in order to get the... And, and we get the detail that they're, they're getting rid of Imperial tech, even though it could be useful. And that is a real-life complicated issue. You know, there, if, if something was built by, you know, some, someone who was using it for evil, should we use it for good, or should we demolish it and just, you know, because it's, you know, on the one hand, it could do good, but on the other hand, you know, it's maybe good to start fresh, you know, it's it's good to not have the baggage of that, you know, because if, if you are accomplishing something good with something that was initially created for evil, you're going to have Apollos just saying, well, I mean, how evil could it be? We're using it for good. So, complicated issue. And, yeah, really, really love when Star Wars tackles complicated issues. Because it can. It can be done. You know, Andor did amazing. <laughs> I really liked you know, Tong's days, am I right? And the, the you know... Massive hairy aliens, like uh, that's universal. That I I don't care what part of the theoretical multiverse you come from, everyone can recognize. Like, oh, uh, here we go again, you know. And I I like when you know in in the other car when when Doctor Pershing says it, like no one is receptive to it, and and KDM O'Brien is like, we'll work on that part. Let's see, and yeah, you know, she points out she got the biscuits from this, let's see, you got yourself your biscuit, and yeah, they have to get away from the, the droids checking tickets, and 
yeah, you know, that is because if they were to try to buy tickets, they would probably be flagged as you're not supposed to leave the perimeter. I'm sorry to have to do this to you, but I'm going to have to call, you know, the, the New Republic Coruscant equivalent of a cop to, to take you back to, you know, don't take it personal, but those are the rules kind of thing, you know. So, and they have to jump. Do you trust me? Aladdin? And... Yeah, they do manage to, you know, it, and, and, you know, good old jump from a moving train. You know, I love when, yeah, like, like I said, I love when Star Wars does something that we've seen, you know, somewhere before that, you know, and, and we get the Star Wars equivalent of it. And, and you know, makes sense. They land on those, like, it's, it's like um, fabric kind of, you know, so they're not like, you know, at first, they're looking at, oh, do not jump directly onto the, you know, even if those things are not electrified, which 100% they are, that's going to be a really hard landing. But they jump to the side, which also, you know, like, I forget, it's it's a physical law thing. You know, if, you, if you're moving fast and you jump off, then you're still going to be moving fast. But if you, like, jump to the side, that helps, like, I, I forget what it's... Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I think you know what I mean. And they land on like fabric, and they roll a little. That's gonna take a lot of the the hit off the. So yeah, and they shake hands, and yeah, um, I gotta see more of KDM O'Brien playing spies because holy crap. Dang, Ferret is she good at it? Like, just I legit, at that point I was ready to believe. No, I I guess she's like she look you know looks in his eyes, shakes his hand. I guess she's legit. Oh no, never mind. She you know this whole thing was like a trap or arguably a test. You know, so that's yeah, and he's arrested and she isn't. Because they knew, and that's how they knew that they would be there, you know. And that noise that they heard earlier, that was not the ship settling. That was the, the cops arriving. And they hook him up to this thing that looks a lot like ECT, which is very unnerving. And, you know, she turns the, the thing up when when no one else is, is there to see, so... Yeah, and, and, you know, he points out this is a mind flayer, you know, and they're like, no, 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 I, I know it looks like one. So, they're not getting rid of all of the Imperial tech. They're j they're keeping the stuff they think might be useful to them. You know, so, you know, maybe there is, like, maybe the rest of it is, is for, for show. You know, maybe it's every every so often there will be a, a hearing in the, in the, I guess they have a Senate again. And it's be like, look, see, we we got all this imperial tech, and we have had it all destroyed because we want to get away from the empire, you know. But secretly, they're keeping some stuff. So I I really appreciate that detail. Honestly, this is approaching like and or levels of I I guess now they can't have been. I mean, they were they were producing this when Andor was airing, so it can't be like a response to like. And actually, was Andor positively? I know there's certainly a number of people who didn't really care for Andor season one, but but yeah, you know, it's approaching the the level of of like complicated that that Andor really hit, and and yeah, I. Sign me up if this is the future of Star Wars. If Star Wars is going to be really mature and complex from now on, that is 100%. Holy crap, I'm, I'm down for that. And I, I like the detail, you know, she, she takes a biscuit and takes a bite of it as she's frying him. So, you know, yeah, she, she does miss the, the days of the Empire. Now, and, and, yeah, 
you know, both Din Djarin and Bo-Katan go to the, I think they're called the Watch, the, the, Man, the Mandalorian cult, you know, and both of them are accepted because she did technically go into the, the waters in the minds of Mandalore, and she hasn't taken off her helmet since, so, yeah, and I, I don't know, I don't know if she's going to try to make this her new thing, you know, she's, and I really appreciate, like, you know, it's, no one, no one, they don't feel the need to have someone say, you are fully accepted, you know, it's just, you know, you you are you are welcome to stay. You can be one of us unless you leave. You know, they, they don't have to have someone like say, that, "Wow, you Bo-Katan, you could actually this could be your new identity." You know, since you don't really have anyone else or anywhere else. No, it's just like and and we can't even see their eyes, but it's still like it really comes across. And you know, people are you know, patting her on the, on the back, and, like, you know, just, it's all body language, because we can't see anybody's face, but clearly she is accepted, you know, and if you think back, like, just two minutes earlier, everyone was like, you're not welcome here, you know, like, um, Vizsla was the one saying it, but everybody else, you know, no one was like, oh, come on, Vizsla, give him a chance, no, no, everyone was 100% on board with, you are an apostate, I, what what would they call her? Because it's not the the anyway, yeah, she non-believer, I guess you know, but she becomes a convert, and the question is if she's going to stay that way, you know. I mean, yeah, she's the you know she would like, you know, she 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 believes she should be in charge, but I mean, is that? You know, maybe there's room for her to work her way to the top. And these are Mandalorians. You know, the other Mandalorians, the you know, the ones that were with her in Season 2, they left and began... What, what did... I think she said they became mercenaries in, in... Was that the first episode of the season? I think that was the first episode of the season, yeah. Of, of this season. So, yeah, it, it legitimately is this thing, like... Is she going to try to to be, you know? And the, you know, we yeah. So we know we know she she believes she should be in charge. We know that the the uh, what's it called the the dark saber is you know she believes that's part of her being in charge. And the the people she wants to be in charge of are Mandalorians, so. Maybe that is possible here, you know, Din still has the Darksaber, and, yeah, so, so, I, I really, really appreciate that, that's, I don't think I've ever been this uncertain about where the show was going next, and I love that, I really appreciate it. I think they did take in, you know, people said, let's see, what was the thing about Maybe not so much season one, but season, yeah, yeah. In season one, they were like, "Oh, this is this is a good like we we're having a bunch of separate adventures, and we have a new protagonist, you know, so, yeah, separate adventure, yeah." Each each episode is a is its own separate adventure in Star Wars, and you know, that's cool. That's something we haven't really seen in live action. You know, it, it's usually a part of the, like, even, you know, all of the movies are basically about the same overall, you know, certainly we realize that by, you know, by the end of the uh, Rise of Skywalker, you know, apparently this is all, you know, it's always about the Emperor at the end of the day, it's about the people who are related to either him or Darth Vader, so, you know, and here we have something that's completely different than season two. Some people felt that, you know, the boost in budget made it too big. There, there's way too much fan service, some people think. I'm, I'm not trying to necessarily agree. And then this, we, we have this more world building and we're like, yeah, I, I really like the, the, you know, season two was teeing it up. But now we're seeing the follow through of what's going to happen with Bo-Katan. Is she going to become 
the ruler again is the the you know so so yeah really really digging i gotta say each episode of this season i'm loving more and more you know with the very first episode i did you know i did love it but there was stuff that okay i you know but yeah i am 100 percent on board with with the yeah this this really looks great i i um yeah, that is it for, for this one. Uh, there will be at least one more video this week, possibly two, we'll see. And yeah, that is... Otherwise, I hope to catch you next week. And yeah, uh, more KDM O'Brien, please. <laughs>